hitting up some uh, bench pressing here with Jason Kalipa today. And uh, we're going to see if his form so far looks pretty good. But it's hard to tell uh, someone's technique until weights get a little heavier. So we'll do a little form check-in as we go. Work up to something heavy, see what we can get. Should be a good time. Oh, yeah, baby. What are we getting ourselves into today? Well, I think we should just try and see if you could work with me on my bench technique. All right. I love it. Let's do it. Let's go over here. And I'm going to ask you questions like that I actually am really curious about too. So I know that, you know, when I've worked with you before, or like seen videos, I know I'm trying to take my shoulders towards my hips, mm -hmm. but it's one thing to talk about. It's another thing to actually do it. Like, so it's here, right? Yep. Yeah, we try to keep try to keep the elbows into the sides a little bit. Here. Yep. Here. Is my grip too wide or is it good? No, it looks pretty good. Okay. Sometimes it's just a function of like, you know, just doing the exercise often for a while and then you get stronger, you know. If you haven't really practiced it a ton, uh, then maybe your strength isn't, maybe your strength isn't and When optimal. it gets heavy, I find that my elbows were flare out and yeah. stuff. Like, yeah, your elbows start to kick out yeah, and then I almost you're... need like a, to train more with the slingshot maybe. Did yeah, you if you can bring your elbows in, in towards your sides, it should kind of lock you in there pretty good. And then when you go to press, you want to kind of like corkscrew your way back out of there. So you'll, as you go to press, you'll kind of throw your arm up and back a bit. Sometimes I can help people transition through like here. They can kind of go whoop, and they can still lock out sometimes the weights that get a little heavy for them. <laughs> I'm checking out how aggressively you throw the bar back into the rack. So the harder I throw it in the rack, does that mean the, the stronger I'm getting? Uh -huh. But it's totally clean. Never cheats on the diet. Does he really? He does eat really well, but we're always we'll fucking just with him. Just give him a hard time. He's a fucking There he is. There he is. So why don't you, uh, not that I care, but I think this is a curious question that I have. Why don't you lock those out? I mean, it looks really cool. Yeah, not just, lock warm, just warming up. No, no, we already, I already did. Just warming up, so just kind of moving around. As the weight gets heavier, I'll All right. lock them out. I will not be going super heavy, but I'll stay with you guys as much as I can. Yeah, like, so what are you trying to hit, 315 today? I don't want to put a, I don't want to put a number on it. We'll see what happens. But yes, I mean, good. You can rack it. One of the keys. Yeah. One of the keys is that you just, you know, when you're warming up, you don't want to do too many reps. Sometimes I can tire you out just a little bit. Like five, five. I, I would say I think a lot of times it's good. Once you start to get into, you know, for if he's going to go for three fifteen, I would just say anything above like one eighty five. I'd only do like one rep. Your body needs to be your uh, heart rate needs to be elevated a little bit, and you need to be used to the exercise that you're doing at the moment. So, and a little bit used to the weight. But you don't need to do reps. I think people think they need to get like their muscles warm, mm. and you don't you don't necessarily have to get like your chest muscles and triceps warm for a good bench workout. You might want to get your overall body warm uh, through just doing various stuff. But like for me, this usually works enough to just to just do this. So sometimes I'll start doing sets of three and stuff like that real early, just so you don't just so you're kind of conserving some energy. Right. Sometimes people do like a set of 10, you know, with like 225 and their goal is 315 for the day. That might make it tough. One, two, three. Yeah. That's it? Yeah, it's good. <laughs> mm -hmm. Fucking made it. <laughs> 
So you start doing liftoffs, like, at what point, normally? If you're really, like... Yeah, I think it's just, if, if you can give someone a liftoff, you may as well, just because... It just... To get them used to it? Um, that part, too, but it just makes the lift easier, so... Mm. Sorry. A little less risk position. of injury. Oh. Yeah. Look at that. Yeah, I like this bench. Unit yeah, it's a nice bench. It has the step on it. That's nice. Yeah. Let's get it. Whoop. Throwing out. Dude. This is such a bro out session. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. This is where the big boys start to play. Uh -huh. 225 for singles. Let's right. fucking go. <laughs> <laughs> Our body weight. <laughs> yep. Yep. Let's go. Nice. Okay. Oh. I don't know. So oh, boy. Have a oh, boy. Oh, boy. <laughs> Let's go. One, two, three, up. Come on. Smooth, there you go. Nice. So, should I pay attention? So as it starts getting heavier, what I feel like my body does is I flatten out more mm -hmm. and my elbows come out. Mm -hmm. Is that just like, hey man, it fucking is what it is, just gotta train more? Uh, you, you're tending to accelerate as the weight goes closer to your body, which a lot of people will do, and they'll kind of they'll get almost like a little bit of a bounce. Yeah. And then you, you miss out on a little piece of the exercise. So picture if you had somebody and you're training them for like deadlift and they're using bumper plates and they're really bouncing the weight off the ground really severely, yeah. you would say, hey, I, especially if they had a trouble at the start, you would say, I think it'd be better if you slowed that part down. Not that you can't bounce it at all, but a little bit more control will help build up a lot more strength. So in training, for training purposes, it's really wise to either pause or just slow down a lot, which sucks because then it makes you use less weight, but you'll gain a lot more strength th through that process. So do you normally bench like where you kind of drop it and chuck it or do you? <laughs> 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 what you're saying, yeah. I really appreciate and it makes total sense, right? right? Because of course in, um, in like comp, like if I could balance off the deadlift, I mean, you yeah, know? yes, yeah. You know, well, you're doing, doing your... time deadlift and you got to do 20 of them. Yeah, right whatever. Uh, I mean, as long as you're not like blatantly, but like, but you're right. Like if you really like tempo it down, barely touch, come up, not even tempo, just mm -hmm. control it more. Yeah, you're probably gonna get better strength gains. And I think for me, if the goal is to develop, I'm, I'm probably missing out on from like here to here, like I'm missing out on some range because yeah. I'm letting it just kind of boom, boom. It's not getting trained as much. So yeah. if you just did something so simple for like three weeks, if you did, five sets of five with a weight that challenged that area and just progressively went a little heavier, you'd probably gain enough strength to bench 315 really easy. Huh. In, in, I mean, in, in a month, in a month. I mean, just the way your body responds to shit too, you know? Oh. Yeah, like you want your body to be able to like reverse it, you know, itself. You know, you want to have the, but it does make it hard to, you know, it makes it hard to use. Sometimes you got to reduce the weight by a lot, and it's frustrating. <clears throat> One, two, two, three, up. There you go. Yeah, dude. I see, I, I see a big difference in what you're doing and what I'm doing. You know? uh, I get what you're saying, Mark. I, I, I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying. Come on. Let's get it. One, two, two, three, up. There you go. Good. Good. I've had three plates in two years. Yeah, it's been a while, right? Here we go. Up. Here we go. Good. Get the fuck out of here. Being so dramatic. <laughs> Whoa, let me do it. <laughs> Keep that form locked in. Here we go. One, yep. two, two, three, up. Oh, yeah. Smooth. Oh, yeah. that feels so good. That feels so good to do that. Woo! It's been so long. Thank you. All right. Let's go. Let's go. Ah, mm, ah. 
<laughs> try, make, it, come on. try and make this look like Mark's. That's right. Come on, Jason. Here we go. Let's, Let's go. go. One, two, three. Up. Oh, oh! Towards me. Push it towards me. Go, oh, son of a bitch. Damn it. No! Good effort. I was pushing the wrong way, huh? A little bit. A little bit. Oh. Dude, probably like two weeks or three weeks. If you change some shit, you'll hit it. <laughs> like, God, we all know you're gonna hit it. It's, it's like right there, huh? Yeah. Oh, ah. Yeah, a little practice with uh, some pauses, I think, would help a ton. I think it's that. Yeah. Using like. You think that's what it is, though? Right yeah, here. Yeah. Use like I would start like week one. Use like 250 pounds, something like that, and then maybe go to like 265. With pauses down here. Mm-hmm. I think that's. A couple sets of five reps, you know, get four or five sets in. And then, you know, the next week, add 10 pounds, drop the weight, or drop a rep, rather. Yeah. And just do that for like a month. You know what I'm talking about? You see, it's like right here, right? It is just all... But it's like, like all the tension, you like, you, you come here and then it's, it's like you, you disengage here mm -hmm. to try to move. So that's the problem. Yeah, because if you were to keep all this and train with that, then once you get here, even if you did that same thing, because you built the strength to maintain this with lighter weight, you could still do that and you'd manage 315. But right now you're losing it at that last moment. And it's hard for you to push off there and re-engage your lats. Let me do a set. Let yeah, me do. I'll, I'll, maybe I'll, so I get what you're saying. So what you're saying is, because this is really important, because I imagine this happening for other people too. I'm coming down and then I'm thinking, let me like shotgun this, right? So I'm going ding, ding, right? But what you're saying is I'm missing the tension in my lat and engagement because at the bottom I'm like getting loose. Absolutely. Hmm. It's, uh, it's similar to any sport. You need to, be able to, you need to be able to practice. So you need to use weights that allow you to actually practice and actually think about what you're doing rather than just surviving and not dying. <laughs> you know, same thing if you guys started doing jujitsu shit on me, I, I'd, I'd be completely lost and for me to learn you'd have to slow it down. You'd have to say, you know, okay, well, you need to work on this drill, Mark, because you suck from this position. Yeah. You'd have to really slow it down a lot. I'd have to do it 7,500 million times, and then it would start to get ingrained in my head more. But what I think is important about, like, this learning lesson right now, and I'm, I'm not blowing, so I'm, I'm being completely serious. Like, you would think it's like, hey, the problem is from here to here. Maybe right. get some bench boards, which you could do, right? Absolutely. Yeah. But what you guys are saying is what you're seeing is, it's actually the fact that I'm just trying to create momentum. Mm -hmm. By trying to create momentum, I'm, I'm, I'm almost losing momentum or tension. Because you're not training that, yeah. You're not training from that position. You so want to train, you want to train. It's it heavy though. You're, you're missing training from the deepest position, which is the most important position because it's the weakest position. You're at, you have the least mechanical advantage with both your arms pinned back behind like the midline of your body. And that's what we need to train the most. You're skipping out on that by going whoop. So let's just say as a, let's just say in training, you are doing what we're talking about. Yes. Right. Then when you actually get to trying to set like a heavy load, do you do what I'm talking about? You can occasionally do that. And you, it, if you're going to compete, you do what the rules allow, Which kind of what you said with it. dinking the deadlifts off the ground, bouncing the deadlifts off the ground. If you are still in your CrossFit uh, mode of, of competing in the games and stuff like that, and I was to work with you, or Ansema was to work with you on deadlifts, we would say, Jason, we understand that you're going to do whatever you got to do when you compete, but let's train this way. It's safer. You're going to be way stronger. Like, rather than you uh, pulling 550 or whatever it is, you'll be pulling 600, 625, and when uh, a workout asks for you to deadlift 405, you'll be crushing everybody. It will be ridiculous. You'll move faster by moving slower. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which is so weird, yeah. counterintuitive a lot of times. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm move this around a couple times. See what see what happens. Let's see what happens. Up. Oh. Nice. Up. Oh. There we go. Nice crack in the nail. That was strong. Let's just do, just do a set of three. Bring the weight down under control. You don't really need to pause. Yeah. But you know, a half second or so on the chest wouldn't wouldn't hurt. Okay. Do you want to lift off? Uh, sure. Okay. One, two. Oh. There you go.
let's go for five. Just to show you, like, it's challenging. Nice. Good. Last one. Good. So, and each time you yeah. do that, you're, you're actually, you'll be able to think about your set a little bit. Like, you'll say, am I bouncing them off my chest or am I, because sometimes people will still do mini bounces when they pause the weight. Um, but the main thing is you'll be able to feel and get the right groove of the lift over and over again. And you'll be, you'll be giving yourself positive feedback time and time again. Yeah. I mean, you said it really well too, like, is that you want to put yourself the position of most, um, like the poorest position, right? Yeah. Is like, it'd be like the equivalent of a muscle up. A lot of times when people do muscle ups, they never work the bottom of the dip mm -hmm. because it kind of sucks. So most people, when they do dips, they get to like right here. But when you receive your muscle up for the first time, you're not going to receive it here. You're going to receive it here. And so you have to have this, the prerequisite strength to kind of get out of it. Similar, similar concept. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. What do you want? I'll do one more set. All right. Really nice comparison for like the CrossFit audience mm -hmm. is what we're talking about right now. Up. Good. Yeah, but look how it, like, dude, your fucking whole body is off the bench. <laughs> right. Like, but that's not the way I'm doing it. <coughs> what do you mean? Like, he's really digging in with his feet. Yeah, oh, yeah my, that's a lot yeah, of leg drive. I'm pushing myself this way a lot. Mm -hmm. Do you yeah, not, we can show you that more. Leg drive? I don't think I'm using any leg drive. Oh, that's gonna. Ooh, boy. I'm, ooh. I, so why like why God. a why a bench? Why a belt for bench? I just think bench pressing uh, requires your full body. And whenever we do stuff for your full body, whether it be uh, a deadlift or a squat, I think it's a good idea to throw on a belt. It's not always necessary. I think sometimes it's a good idea to build that strength without it. But in this case, we're not really trying to strengthen the back or target the back. The back just ends up being in a static position that I think it can oftentimes be uncomfortable, can potentially lead to injury. But here we're using it more so just to help create tightness. Okay. Like some tightness around the midsection and torso. And then also it should teach you that your back needs to be off the bench uh, quite a bit. So take your, um, pull, pull your upper body, pull your upper body up towards the bar a little bit, like uh, in this direction, yep. And now tuck your shoulders in like your back pocket if you can. There we go, yep, like that. Yeah. I would widen the legs out just a bit. There we go. Yep, and that should be pretty good. What you're trying to do, I said it's kind of comfortable. Yeah. What you're trying to do is you're trying to shove your, your foot uh, into the front of your shoe. So there should Shove be my foot. Why am I cramping? It's almost like a, like a leg extension. That's, That's what you're so trying to do. Here. Mm -hmm. Here. Yep. And you want to try to shove your heel towards the ground, but your heels don't necessarily have to be on the ground. But uh, I just like for people to do that because then it keeps this part of their body up. We're trying to keep all this up. If you, if any of this stuff comes down, then you end up pushing with the shoulders a lot instead of being able to sit back into using just more muscle, basically. Okay, so I'm driving into the ground. Okay. You should be yeah. pushing with your legs towards Encima kind of the whole time. Yeah. Okay. Ready? Yeah, one, two, two. three. Up. Oh. So I'm pushing. Yep. There you go, nice. A little slower. You're still bouncing a bit. Let's pause this one. Pause it on your chest. Press. Good, two more. You're already way stronger. Press. Good. One more. Yep. Legs tight. Legs tight. Press. Nice. Great. Job. So I. You yeah. got stronger on that set than you were on the last set. Like yeah. that. I mean, that looked like. To me, that looked like you could do this for eight or nine reps. So pushing. Yeah, oh yeah. Yeah. That same technique. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a constant like leg extension. Uh, when I. When I started benching like... So when you say leg extension, I'm pulling in or pushing? Because I was trying to... Uh, leg, oh, yeah, leg extension. Yeah, Sorry, not, yeah, yeah. not uh, hamstring curl. Yeah, yeah you're, you're pushing... You're pushing... Uh, yeah, you're pushing away from... You're pushing towards him, basically. Towards the yeah. back. When I started benching, you know, bigger and bigger weights, just there had to be more and more concentration on that in particular was to keep the legs tight the whole time. As the weights got heavier, my whole body kind of felt like crushed and my body would want to kind of go like this. And so I'd have to figure out like, okay, how do I, how do I, how do I just stay this way? Right. And that's when I started really trying to screw my feet into the ground a little bit more and push my toes in the front of my shoes. Like I, I would intentionally wear 
a shoe that's like a size bigger so there was room <laughs> for me to push my foot <laughs> into the front of my shoe my ass used to hurt all the time after bench pressing my glutes would, would be killing me after bench press workouts because, you're driving because I would be driving time. myself <clears throat> so hard it's almost like I'm really trying to dump myself onto my sh upper shoulders and my butt would be flexed the whole time with my knees out I'm kind of sliding on this shirt but I would be like this the whole time and just all that pressure the whole time would be flexing my butt yeah and flexing my quads and it was <laughs> it was tough like the recovering from those workouts was brutal I'll see if I can get into the same position. So here, I'm gonna pull, and then push. So is this, is that it right there? I think that looks pretty good. Let's just try one more thing. Um, bring your feet this way more. <clears throat> um, and maybe just out a little bit more. Okay, and then organize your upper body again. Here? Yeah, pull, pull yourself up a little bit more again. There we go, good, yep. That looks good, and then flex the legs the whole time. Okay. One, two, up, there we go. Legs tight the whole time. There you go. You came down a little fast at the end there. You can actually start nice. faster on the way down but pause it still. There we go, good, yep. Nice. Good, stay with it. Legs tight. Nope, you fell. Stay tight, stay tight. There we go, yep. Push. Nice. Yep. nice. Good, another one. Legs tight, legs tight, drive it. Up and back. Ooh. Yeah, nice. Okay, you yeah. see how like, you know, I think norm normally I think you might get stuck right there. Yeah. But you were able to still power through it. You see it sometimes in Olympic lifting too, when people are overhead, that they, they get stuck, and you're like, oh, that guy's not going to lock it out. And then sometimes their elbow just drifts back, and then boom, they're in a locked position. You're like, how the hell did that happen? Same thing can happen on a bench press. It's like you don't want to intentionally really swing the elbows out, especially not early in the lift, because then your elbows are out and you have nothing underneath you. But as you press, if you get stuck, you can drive the elbows and you can almost like kind of sink into the bench a little bit. Obviously, you still need lockout power to help generate that to get the weight up. But up and back is going to be a little smoother. And that's what you're yeah. doing. That looked great. No, that's good. So a couple things is we're comparing. I'm just trying to think in my head. I'm comparing the bottom position. Like this, this bottom position of a dip is the shittiest position, so most people don't hit it. Mine's setting up the, the dip The bottom, bar, yeah. Well, yeah, we can compare it, right? The bottom position of a bench is where money needs to be made. Like, you need to spend some time there, but I never did because you get that balance, and all of a sudden, you're missing out on that whole thing. Yeah. It'd be like the difference between doing a strict pull-up to here and a strict pull-up chest to bar. It's literally night and day. Like, that two inches is night and day. Yeah. And I think what's happening is for a long time I've been missing out on the, on the, on the uh, strength benefits because of that balance that I was getting, even in training, not compared to competing or anything like that. Got it. Got it. That's helpful, dude. I mean, that's a great position. Yeah. It's just, dude, that's a lot of work. That's a lot of work to put yourself in that position. This is part one. So part two, Jason will come back in a month or so. We'll I am coming back in a month or yeah, so, actually. Right? Yeah, it'd be fun, yeah. We should do it. Rep 315. Jason, somebody that's been training for a long ass time, and he's somebody that uh, is constantly pushing the envelope, constantly wanting to get better. And what I continue to learn from guys like him and some other people that we have come around here and there is uh, just the ability to have an open mind, you know, have that white belt mentality. Jason's like, hey, I, I don't know much about bench pressing, so I want to learn from you guys. And he did today, and I think he's going to make some big improvements for that. Strength is never a weakness. Weakness is never a strength. Catch you guys later. Thank you.